Welcome to Tony's Bonsai. What time is it you're asking? It's Tanuki time. Regular viewers of my channel will recognise this tree for sure. This is the rosemary experiment that didn't work. For those of you unfamiliar with Tanuki, it's a Japanese term and it means using the skeleton of an old dead tree and wrapping a new plant round it. On one of my recent videos where um, I chopped off an oak, there was a comment saying, why don't you use the piece of dead tree and wrap a goat's willow around it? That got me thinking and I thought, better than that, because that was just an old stumpy oak. Why don't I use this for tanuki and wrap a goat willow around this? But before I do, I need to use some tools and just make this a bit more manageable and a bit more interesting as well. So effectively what I need to do is take these stumps that are just flat and they've been cut off with just, I think, my secateurs. That doesn't look natural at all. Um, so I need to peel these back as if I was creating dead wood on a juniper or another tree, just to make it look more lifelike. So I'm going to go to town now with this a bit and just start ripping this wood. This is the thickest piece and it's too thick for me just to tear, so I'll use my concave cutters, make a little cut in the top, which should then allow me to peel this away. Now this is old dry dead wood, so it's not going to peel off because it's very inflexible. Is that a word inflexible or is it unflexible or just not flexible? I don't know. You can tell that I wasn't that interested in English when I went to school. But I'm drifting off the point here which is bonsai. <laughs> and all I'm doing is just trying to make this look like something that's been through a few wars something that's lost a few fights there we go that's looking good i think i might have been a bit a bit greedy with that first cut with the with the cut, concave cutters maybe i should have Instead of going down the middle, I think I should have just gone maybe a third of the way. But this is uh, this is working quite nicely. I love doing this kind of uh, this kind of creation. I'm a really keen artist. And this is the side of bonsai that interests me the most. You know, expressing myself and trying to create. So I'm just working my way down, pulling away fibers and making this look thinner and less chunky. It was just too fat. Whereas that now, I think that's uh, beginning to look good. I'm not sure what I'm going to do at this very top because it's a bit it's a bit like a brush on the end well that's what I'll do I'll just grab these fibers at the top and just pull them like that till hopefully there's no not too many fibers at the top oh that was a good one that was a good one and by doing this I'm really creating an effect that does look very natural. I think so anyway. There. That's beginning to look good. I like that. This one here doesn't need cutting at the top with the uh, concave cutters. I can just grab, grab the top, snap it. It's actually quite a bit loose, this branch, so...
Hmm. I think I'll rip that off right at the base. This was the one that I was just working on and it's a bit loose in here. So I think this is better just being pulled like that. That worked nicely. Lovely. Oh yeah, much better. This top branch is really nice, but again, they just need breaking down at the tips. Like that. So by pulling one way, then the other. So you can pull it off one way, pull it down the other way. You get these natural Oh yeah, these pieces that come off like that and they form these natural points. Which works great. You'll have to excuse me hands. This is uh, SBR glue. I was doing some work yesterday uh, on my chimney breast that needed doing. And I used some glue. I can't get it off. <laughs> so th this little section now is almost done. And it's just a question of working my way around. So when it comes to Tanuki, from what I've seen, people tend to use um, the sort of coniferous plants like juniper and pines and that sort of thing as opposed to deciduous material. I think hawthorn would work well with something like this, but you definitely need a plant that can grow into a kind of, that's a flexible whip for you to be able to wrap it around. And these goat willow, they just grow like triffids for some reason in my garden. I've just got loads of them, they're everywhere. Half of them I end up just pulling up just like weeds because they just they get in the way but I've got quite a few nice long thin ones and one of me well I'm unsure I think I'm still undecided should I just use one or should I use multiple goat willows on this I think that could be interesting the main the main one that I'm going to use has got one trunk but then it splits off into two so I could use that maybe to come up two of the branches and then maybe a couple of other goat willows to go up the other two that could be interesting what do you think hmm I'm still sort of deciding on this as we go it's not the ideal time to be creating something like this you'd normally do this in the spring but these goat willows as I said I've got loads of them and they seem super hardy as well I don't think they'll have any problem being lifted and moved and dealing with young plants and young trees is not the same as dealing with mature trees they're a lot tougher they can take a lot more punishment and they're not just going to die because they moved in august well that's been my experience anyway i've almost done with this now just following the same technique peeling peeling off the the branches and making them look interesting and I think that's good I think that works well just this branch here that I find to be a bit long so I'll just grab that and pull that down now will I need to treat this wood 
before I create the tanuki. I think I will. This one's loose. So if one's autumn, very loose, I can't have that. So I'll just pull that off. Like that. Mm. I'm sort of tempted to apply some lime sulfur to this now before I create the tanuki. Although this has been outside now all summer and it uh, seems to be doing okay. Mm. These are kind of the decision times when I'm filming a video and I'm making, a, making the design decisions as I go and thinking what should I do. Yeah, let's get some lime sulfur on it. I think they suggest that you wet the tree first before you apply the lime sulfur, but... I think it'll be fine. And I'm going around the whole... the whole plant, because I want to preserve it all. So I'm just painting all of it quite like this this job although if you've never used lime sulfur before I'm sure most people watching this have used it it absolutely stinks it's like um, it smells like rotten eggs I suppose it's sulfur dioxide I remember when we used to do experiments at school you know in the chemistry chemistry class we used to get this smell in uh, in the lab the old sulfur dioxide when when you're creating salts and all that kind of stuff that's about as much as I can remember just goes to show you just forget everything you learn at school don't you <laughs> when do you ever use it There, so that's one painted, nice and yellow. Now, as time goes on, this yellowness goes away and this turns into bright white. And my opinion has always been, if you're gonna do something a bit crazy, go full crazy. If you're going to make a, t a tanuki, go for it. Let's have this whole thing kind of bright white and sun bleached. This is no, this is no time for subtlety and half measures. This is where you commit to it. I suppose it's a kind of, it's not really fusion bonsai. I've seen fusion bonsai by uh, Bonsai by s &C. He did a video a few weeks ago and uh, they combined multiple trees. So they kind of twisted two different varieties of tree together to create one, which it's kind of mental. <laughs> that's that's a step too far for me. But this kind of thing, this is uh, this is almost art. As I was saying before. Now, what kind of artist? Will be most likely to do something like this. Probably, well, some kind of sculpture. Sculptor. I'm not too up on my sculptors. I do like Henry Moore. And I've been to the um, the Hepworth Museum over in Yorkshire. If you're in England and you get the chance to go over there, I highly recommend that. It's some great work. 
Can't actually remember her first name though. Is it Catherine Hepworth? No, that's Catherine Hepburn. I'm more of an Audrey Hepburn guy. Very nice. Right. So it takes a bit of time, this. I could have sped this process up, you know, with a bit of music. But who wants to listen to music when you can listen to me prattling on? That a load of nonsense. <laughs> laughing at my own jokes. All my life I've been accused of laughing at my own jokes. And people have started saying it in the comments on here. They've been said, do you know that you laugh at your own jokes? I'm like, yeah. <laughs> you're bound to laugh at your own jokes when you're a funny guy. Brilliant. There we go. Oh, lovely. That's... Uh, This is quite good, and it's funny, this, the smell of this sulphur, this egg smell, after a while, it starts growing on you. I, I quite like it. Right, that's the biggest branch done, so I've done these, done these three, just one more major branch to go. And how long this will survive in the long term, this wood, I don't know. With Tanuki, if all the dead wood eventually rots away and disappears, you'll still be left with the, the live tree though, but in a really interesting shape. So it's not the end of the world if, if all this rots away and decays and just disappears. It'll have acted like, a, I suppose, like a framework for developing the shape of the new bonsai. Which, I like the idea of that. It's like a classic artistic ideas of death and life. I think there's an actual name for it, isn't there? Um, what do they call it? Something mort. Morta. Nice. I suspect I might have to give this several coats. But just this one will be enough for the time being. I can do the other coats down the line once the uh, once the goat willow has been attached to it. I just wanted to get this initial this initial one in. That's my turntable just blown over. Yeah, I'm quite pleased with that, it's looking good. I've just given that a couple more coats, so that's had like three good coats over it now, that should really soak in and protect it over the winter. It's a couple of hours since I painted the lime sulphur on, it's gone quite light but it's still fairly yellowish. Uh, and what I've decided to do is do a bit of blowtorch work on it. It's hard for me to talk when I'm using this because it's quite noisy, but 
I'm going to just put the flame on this and kind of see what happens. I'm very much experimenting. Now that does seem quite extreme, but if I then go over it with some sandpaper, this like kind of mellows it down a bit, takes off the blackness. And you're hopefully left, well, I'm hopefully left with something a bit more, a bit more kind of weathered and natural looking. Yeah, I quite like that. Then that looks quite good. Seeing as that test bit worked out quite nicely, I'm going to go all, over all of the tree with a bit more intensity like that and hopefully create that same effect. I really like the, this effect. And it shows the, the kind of, it highlights the, the structure of the wood. Which it does need taking back a bit with the sandpaper definitely just to, just to mellow it a bit. So I'm going to go over the whole tray now just sanding it down taking it back to something a bit more natural down here between my hawthorn some kind of fir and me japanese holly i've got a, a, a what are they called i've even forgotten the name of them goat willow growing it's growing really healthily i'm just gonna stick my trowel in and bring that whole piece up. So, there shouldn't really be much root damage to this. Not really. Come on, baby. 
There we go. I'm really happy with how this has turned out after I used the blowtorch on it. It's a li little darker than I'd like, but then again, this is going to lighten and weather over the next few months. But I need to get this out of this pot. So, I've got a bucket. I'll just tip it in there. Obviously, I don't need to bother about the roots with it being dead. But the plant that I put in with this, the goat, the goat willow that I've just dug up, obviously that needs to be in nice free draining soil and that has to go on and be nice and healthy so i'm just just trying to get this off really this is a better tool yeah nothing worse than using the wrong tool for the job came with a load of good roots actually this this rosemary. It's a shame it didn't make it, but as I've said in previous videos, you know. Some are destined for bonsai fame, some are not. So I don't need to keep all these roots because I want this space. Uh, that's good. Yeah, happy with that. All these fine roots down at the bottom here are surplus to requirement. So, it can just be removed. I'm leaving the, the longer roots to act as kind of support to anchor the tree into the pot. But all this fine stuff, this will just rot away over time. With it not being alive, you know. That's better. There we go. So, I'm beginning to get the shape, shape of the roots now. And the, these can sit in the soil, holding the tree in position. I put some of this soil back in the pot and I clean these roots off a little more. So this is ready to go basically back in like something like that. But I want to get my goat willow, which I've got here and I want to plant this in. I think round here and coming up this way. I think that'll work well. This is the goat willow with all the, the nice roots. But I do want to remove this stuff off the surface. These weeds. I always forget what they're called, these ones. They're like uh, something wart. Some at wart in it, liver wart. So I'll just remove those like that, pull that grass out. And uh, I've got my roots. I won't take any more than that off. So going up to, back to my tree now, because the roots are nice and flat, I think I can position this in here like that. In fact, I can have it even coming from 
underneath. Oh, that works well. So if it comes from underneath and then comes in like this, it'll really have that effect of it being the same tree. And that's what we want to try and achieve. So now that I know where that is, is going, I can poke this down, these roots, get them in position like that, and then start working on this. And I don't want to snap it, but I, I want to bend it to come up that vein there. While I'm at this, I've got more goat willows that I can put in. I'm just deciding whether to put them in now or wait until I've worked on this one. I think the best thing to do is put them in straight away now. So I'm just going to dig a hole here and plant that one there. And I've got another one here. I'll plant this around the back the back side so that it's kind of coming up with the roots which will work well so I've got three there now three will do I can always add more at a later date if I want but the first one I'm going to do is this so I've got my vet tape. I'm going to use vet tape instead of wire to try to hopefully not not mark the. Um, I don't know if vet tape's going to hold. Hopefully though, I, I don't want to mark this this uh, trunk. Well, that fits quite nicely in there. I like that. That works well. I like that position in there. So, I'll take a piece of tape, vet tape. And attempt to To pull that down like that oh that's working quite nicely so I can come over here I'm giving that quite a bit of tension to really pull that down and one more wrap around there that's great Now how can I secure that? I think I'll just tie it. That's the best way. It's a bit fiddly this, when you're dealing with all these young plants plus the, the rosemary. Yeah, all I'll do is I'll just stuff that under there like that and then pull it. That's holding that nicely in there, yeah. So I can now go further along the trunk and do the same thing, but a bit higher up, like that. I think what I'll do with this next one now is now that it's fixed at the base there, I'm going to Going to bring it round and try to twist it up the trunk so that fits nicely there and I'm going to come round and up oh that works well so up here you can see how I've twisted it round the tree it comes up and I'm going to give it 
One more twist. Like that. Oh, how, how far can I push that? Oh, that's better there. So there, it's almost creeping around it like a vine there. And what I can do is, I can now, in fact, probably a piece of wire will work up at this top bit. It hardly needs any holding power because it's wrapped like a vine. So all I'll do is just use a piece of wire to just loosely Hold that top bit like that. I oh, quite like that. That works well. This next trunk can come around. Wonder if I can go crazy and really hmm. No, yeah, I want it attached here at the base and then I want it to come up like that. So I am going to use a piece of the tape. Oh, I can't get tape through there. So I will have to use a piece of wire to hold that. So all I'm doing is threading a piece of wire through the roots and holding it like that. So that when, when I then bring this up, like that, and around, like that, I can then bring that all the way up and tie it in place with Oh, I'm getting picked of wire off the floor here. <laughs> Very professional. So I can just put a piece of wire around that at the top. Just wrap that wire around to just support things and perhaps if that just came down a bit there that'd be better so another piece of wire just around here see I'm learning as I do this it's not something I've done before, you know, I'm not, I'm not an expert on bonsai and a lot of these kind of, these things are just experiments to me where I'm just, just trying to learn and I'm really just showing you my experimentations as I'm doing them. I'm not trying to pretend I'm certainly not pretty. I think it'd be no, it'd be pointless me trying to pretend I'm an expert. This final one is kind of coming straight up and it needs to be in like that into the trunk. So all I'll do is thread that wire through the roots, pull that across to kind of where I want it, if I can. Right there, and then use the wire to hold that in position. Yeah, I like that. And this can then 
be sort of wrapped around and oh snapped it that's my first snap well that's not too bad there because what I can do is bring this wire up and just hold it in position like that and jobs are good and <laughs> I think the last thing to do is the sort of final thing now is to secure this because it's a bit loose so it does need pushing down and kind of securing like that maybe another handful of soil on the top nice well that was basically everything I love about bonsai trying new things getting creative experimenting has anyone ever done uh, a tanuki rosemary and goat willow fusion bonsai before if you have let me know in the comments but I think I'll be waiting a long time for that comment uh, if you'd like to follow the progress of this tree and see if it lives or dies hit subscribe and obviously I'll keep you updated on how it goes. Thanks for joining me, as always, and have a great day. I'll see you soon.